And welcome to the show. I am Bill Nampick, sitting in for Kevin Price. Very excited to be here. Thank you, Mr. Price. We are here to talk about you and your business on The Price of Business. It's so exciting to have such a lineup of great guests. I am Bill Nampick. I also host two radio shows on Saturday on 100.7 FM. You can hear Successful Living with Bill Nampick at 1030 and Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title at 1 o'clock on 100.7 FM on Saturdays. In the meantime, The Price of Business, we are here with our first guest. He is Bruce Newman. He is the author of The Marketing Revolution in Politics. And let's say hello to Bruce Newman. Bruce, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. How are you? Very excited to be here and excited to talk to you. You are known as a leading scholar in the world on the subject of political marketing, which is uh, so timely and so fascinating. Well, I would say with uh, what, what I'm referring to as the Trump effect, not just me, other people as well, <laughs> uh, it is clear that he's risen to the top of the polls all because of marketing. And that is a great word because in, in business and uh, in politics and I think everything else, marketing is sometimes overlooked, but it is super important, isn't it? It is, and uh, what's happened over the last uh, 30, 40 years is the political world has borrowed from the marketing world uh, to develop branding strategies and use big data and analytics and social media. And um, the sophistication of the tools now are so great on the political side, as evidenced by Donald Trump, that there is much to learn for for-profit and non-profit companies that are interested in understanding what's happening in this presidential cycle. So I think what you're saying is you think Donald Trump has a handle on marketing? <laughs> I think I think he's, uh, I would call him a genius at marketing, for better or for worse. That's certainly for the pundits and for the citizens of this country to decide. Right. But he certainly understands the use of free media. He certainly understands the use of branding. He certainly understands the importance of consistency of your brand. And he certainly understands the connection between the messenger and a message, which must be very strong. That's right. And the other thing I think that he does so well and others have done in the past is he's, he demands attention and he has the, the knack and I, I think I'll use your word sophistication in a way to be able to get that attention. So people tune into him or check him out, whether they like him or not. He does, and he has the ability, I would say, is, and I'm not comparing him to Ronald Reagan in any way, but in, in a, from a business, from a marketing standpoint, Ronald Reagan had the ability to make an emotional connection with the people who supported him. And uh, certainly the support uh, for Ronald Reagan was, I think, a broader constituency than who supports Donald Trump. But the fact remains, Donald Trump has been successful at creating this emotional connection with the people that have an anger and are upset with the current government. As they say, he's touched a nerve. Uh, I would say he's touched multiple nerves. <laughs> and yeah, in well, fact, he's touching the, the, the entire body. <laughs> that is so well put. And, and, and those two words that you put together, Bruce, emotional connection, that's exactly right. Because in marketing, in business, we have to make that emotional connection. It's said all the time. I forget, I'm reading a few books right now or have read some that, that use that idea and the importance of storytelling. And it's the storytelling in, in the marketing uh, way, in politics or otherwise, that make an emotional connection. It, it is very much. And the, the book uh, centers on uh, the Obama model. We, in the book, uh, I speak about the paradigm shift that took place with the Obama model. And the Obama model represented the ability to make this emotional connection to respond to a movement. And you're beginning to hear people talk more and more about the Trump movement. That's interesting. And let's tell people where they can get the book as, as we talk about it, The Marketing Revolution in Politics by Bruce Newman, who we're talking to right now. Bruce, where can they get the book? They can go to Amazon.com. They could uh, type in my name, Bruce I. Newman. And uh, what will pop up at the top of the list, amongst another 15, 13 books I've written, is The Marketing Revolution in Politics. And also... In the title, Marketing Revolution in Politics, I don't see those words, and, and, and we're, we've been talking about it, marketing and politics together, and you've added the word revolution. So it sounds, I have not read the book yet, but it sounds like a fascinating read. What inspired you to write the book? Excuse me? I said, what inspired you oh, to what write inspired the book? Me, yes, uh, what inspired me is I, I took note of the second Obama victory in 2012, and I realized that there was a business model 
a, a strategic blueprint, if you will, that was used by Obama in both 2008 and 2012. Uh, relying on the use of big data, customer analytics, micro-targeting social media, reflected in the fact that he won in 2012 with only 3% of the margin in the popular vote, but 30% margin in the electoral college vote, which is to say he very successfully used the new technologies that we have in marketing to pinpoint who to target with his message. He sure did, and it worked, right? I would say it worked very effectively, and the candidates are using the same thing today. If you look at the, uh, at least a few of the folks walking around with uh, Donald Trump or with uh, Marco Rubio or, or Ted Cruz, they have a big folder. In the folder is a, a, a uh, multitude of statistics that determines which news station they should do an interview with, what it will return in terms of viewership, what's it worth in terms of a paid advertisement. Everything is being driven in this campaign by what the Obama model created, which is this, this Internet model that exists today in politics. That's very interesting. And as we have already talked about Donald Trump's uh, skill at marketing, who, what other candidates do you see right now that are also doing very well in the marketing? Well, I think Bernie Sanders has to be given some credit for uh, rising from nowhere to somewhere and, and taking on an establishment candidate uh, like Hillary Clinton. Uh, it, it's, it's more evident today that uh, he's, he's most likely not going to have a chance to win the nomination. But I would say he was very effective at using social media. He relied on Snapchat. Uh, he was communicating with young people that support him. And he was able to create a filter, and if you hit that uh, filter when you receive the Snapchat from him, a political commercial came online. So he's been very effective. Donald Trump, in order to use social media, has been able to get 30, 40, 10, 20, 30, 40,000 people coming to an event, all with only one requirement, that you provide your email address so they can build a database. I think Marco Rubio, too has been very effective at using branding at per perhaps a late stage now in trying to knock down the Trump brand and build up his with a very heavy negative attack. And what about Ben Carson? Ben Carson was great <laughs> up until he talked about his autobiography and some things he did uh, in, when he was a younger person. Why he did that, I don't know, but certainly uh, he resonated for a while. I think the American people, quite frankly, Bill, are looking for the next John Wayne hero-type figure, almost like the Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. someone who's going to ride in on the horse strong, full of confidence. You know, when I look around at the candidates out there, I see a Hillary Clinton, you know, what we'll call her a Jane Wayne, not a John Wayne, who certainly has the strength to convince people she could fix things. And, and Donald Trump, both uh, another person with a strength of personality that seems very convincing, and people are buying into that today. And that's a great example to use the John Wayne and the Jane Wayne illustration because that sums it up. And also your reference to, to Ronald Reagan, it, it, it's like uh, in going back to the first part of the interview when you talked about touching the nerves of the country and, in fact, the whole body. I think that's so, so brilliant. Bruce, also, tell people a little bit more about the book that, uh, that uh, we haven't talked about yet. Well, the book has uh, seven marketing lessons uh, in it. It intertwines the, the use of technology in three different sectors, in the political, the profit, and the nonprofit centers. And it talks about the best practices of all these different technologies, the big data, analytics, et cetera, that are used in each of the sectors and how each sector can learn from the other. And then this is intertwined into the seven marketing lessons, which are respond to customer needs. That's lesson one. Lesson two is to use research strategically. Lesson three is to integrate research methods. Lesson four is to develop a unique brand identity. Lesson five is to have a winning advertising strategy. Lesson six is to develop a relationship with your customers. And lesson seven, I think the most important, is to learn how to deal in a crisis, referring to crisis management, which, in effect, a political campaign is in from the get-go. 
So someone does not have to be in the world of politics to benefit from this book, The Marketing Revolution in Politics. It sounds like you have great ideas. Once again, Bruce, tell people how they can get the book, please. Uh, Bill, they can get the book by going to Amazon.com and typing in my name, Bruce, middle initial I, last name Newman, N-E-W-M-A-N. And up at the top of the list of books I've written will will come the title, The Marketing Revolution in Politics. Thank you so much, Bruce. I am going to read that book. In the meantime, you're listening to The Price of Business. Bill Knappick sitting in for Kevin Price. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned. We have much more. 